Hello everybody, it is Nat from Studio Hacks here. Let's try and learn Ableton Live 10 in 10 minutes. I'm using the standard version of Ableton Live 10. I'm also on a Mac computer on the Catalina operating system. However, this will be as generic as possible to work across multiple platforms and operating systems. First of all, when we open up Ableton Live, I want to show you some of the preferences that will help you customize the look and some of the audio settings to get those right from the very start. So I'm going to first go to live up on the top left hand corner and select preferences. We have multiple tabs here and there are a lot of settings, but the main ones you might want to start out with are the look and feel, and you can change the theme depending on how you want to use the software. I like using the dark theme because my eyes don't like looking at bright colors. The other setting that is really important is under the audio tab. Under the audio tab, we have the buffer size right here, and we also have the audio input and output device. These are two critical settings to get right, right from the start. So if you have a audio interface that you have plugged into your computer, then you're going to want to select that as your input and output device. If you're just using a laptop or a desktop computer and you're just using the onboard sound on this Mac, this is the generic built-in output. This is what I'm using for this tutorial. So this is where you select the device. This buffer size is very important because it will control the latency. If you have this set really high to the max, you'll notice when you're playing in some music on a MIDI keyboard or when you're talking in on a microphone or singing, there might be an audible delay between when you hit the note or when you sing the note and when you hear it through your headphones. So if that's happening, make sure you turn this buffer size down to as low as you can get. Now, if you get too low, you'll start getting audio dropouts and clicks and pops. So it's a bit of a balancing act to get this right. I generally have it on 256 or around 512. For me and my computer, that seems to work best. Have a little experiment with that. So with those preferences out of the way, let's look at how you can get a little bit of help. So up the top here on this help menu and the help view, this gives you a nice little tour of Ableton Live and it gives you some general help for beginners. I would highly suggest going through this if you have the time to do so. You can close this by clicking on the little X here. The other thing that is really helpful for beginners is if I go up to the view and when I click on the view menu, select the info. That can be turned on and off with the question mark. And you'll notice down on the bottom left hand corner, anytime I hover over something, it will tell me a little bit of information about what that is. So if you're wondering, say, what this button is, we will now look down there and it will tell you that's the arrangement record button. So Ableton Live has two main views. It has the arrangement view, which we're looking at right now, and the session view. The session view is quite unique to Ableton Live. This is where we can muck around with loops, and this is a non-linear sort of screen where we can use loops and samples. And on the other main screen, the arrangement, this is more like a traditional digital audio workstation where we've got time from left to right and we have tracks. You can switch between the two main views with the tab button. Now, when you open a session from scratch in Ableton Live, you are given two MIDI tracks, which are useful for software instruments, synthesizers, and you play them in with a MIDI keyboard or your computer keyboard. And we also have two audio tracks, which are for recording real world sounds, such as your voice through a microphone. To create a new track, you can simply right click your mouse in an empty space here and select insert audio, MIDI or return track. The other way we can do that is go to create and insert audio or MIDI track from this menu here. So first of all, if you want to just start creating some music, I would suggest highlighting a MIDI track and going over to the browser on the left hand side. And if you can't see this browser, you can open and close it with this little arrow here. When it's facing down, you can't see it. And when it's facing sideways, it'll open the menu. This has a whole list of software instruments, audio effects, VST plugins, and samples that you can get started with. So under instruments, you'll see all the instruments that are given to you with Ableton Live. 
you can select any one of these or you can go to sounds which has a different way of viewing them rather than the individual instruments. This will just give you a list of sounds. Let's just load up one of these basic instruments. Operator is one of my favorites. To load an instrument, you can double click it when you've got the track highlighted, or you can just drag it onto a track just like that. Now, I should be able to hear that instrument straight away if I have a MIDI keyboard plugged in, or if I have this little icon selected right here, I can play it with my computer keyboard. And if I would like to record that, I can simply hit this record button right here and then start playing. You can see there that we have some data, some MIDI data that I've played in on my computer keyboard. Now, if we want to zoom in and out on the horizontal pane, I simply hold my mouse over this section here, click and go up and down like this. These are MIDI notes here and I can click anywhere on this timeline and hit play to hear that. Now, some quick things about the tracks. Over here, we have the record arm. If you're not hearing anything when you're playing it, you have to have this record arm on. We have a solo button right here, and that will only allow you to hear songs, sounds on this track. We have the, this is like a mute button, but it actually turns the track off and click it again, it will turn the track on again. We have the track volume, click and slide up and down to change that. We have the pan up and down is left and right. And we can view these in a bit more detail if we switch over to the other view, which is the session view. And you can see down the bottom here, we have what looks more like a standard mixing desk here with the pan left and right and the volume up and down. Now, if I want to record audio, I'm gonna go back to the other screen it's very, very similar. I record arm um, an audio channel. And if I want to hear the audio through my headphones while I'm recording it, I simply click this in here. I don't want to hear it because I have my studio monitors on at the moment. So I'm going to keep this off. And autumn auto will only let you hear it when you're recording. So let's click record and see if we can record some audio. Hello, this is audio. Okay, so that has automatically selected the first input from my audio interface. And we can change that right over here. We've got two inputs to choose from, and we can, it's saying external in. Now this is going to select whatever device I have set up in this preferences menu under my audio input. And we can configure the inputs and the outputs on that through here. I'm not going to go into that for the moment. Hopefully it should be working for you. Let's see if that can play back now. Hello, this is audio. Beautiful. So we've recorded some MIDI and we've recorded some audio. Now you might want to have a song that is a certain beats per minute and you might want to hear a metronome when you're recording. So I'm going to delete both of those and we can hear the metronome by clicking this little icon here on. And we can also change the beats per minute to change the tempo of our song to slower and faster by clicking that and dragging down or up. Let's do 90 beats per minute and let's record something very simply on this MIDI track. Now I can't hear it because I haven't clicked on the actual track that I'm recording. Let's now record um, this MIDI track and record on it. Beautiful. I have a little bit of MIDI and I'm now on a grid. So I can switch that metronome off. Now I want to go back over to this browser and find some samples. This will show all the samples that you have in your current packs that you've downloaded. And you can search through this library right here. So I'm going to go see if I have any drum loops. You just click on these to hear it. And if it's not playing automatically, make sure you have this little headphone button on down here. I'll just simply drag that in down the bottom here. It's going to create a new track for me. Let's have a listen to that. 
You can find external sounds and things that you've downloaded on this little places here. If you have a drum loop on your desktop or something like that, you can simply click on that and you can drag an audio file directly in. If we wanted to add a bass track to this, I could simply go to sounds over here, click through and find a nice bass sound, drag that onto this MIDI track. And here's one other little trick. If you highlight an area and right click it, you can select insert MIDI clip. That means that we now have a blank MIDI clip. And if I double click on the header, we have a little piano roll down the bottom and I can actually draw in notes by holding down the B key or clicking the B key or by double clicking on an area. And to be able to hear that, I select these little headphones right here. That's quite loud. So I'm going to turn the volume on that track down by clicking and dragging that down. So we can change the lengths of these notes and I can zoom in with this little area here. Double click there. And let's listen to what this sounds like in the context of our song. I can double click again. So you don't need a MIDI keyboard or you don't even need to play it in. You can just click the notes in with your mouse. Now we're almost running out of time. I think we've just gone over the 10 minutes. So the final thing that I want to show you is you can add some effects. And with a default Ableton Live session, they give you a reverb track down here and a delay track. And if you want to send some of the audio from one of these software instrument tracks or an audio track down to get some of these effects, you simply use these two little icons here and you click and drag up to give that's send A, which is the reverb. And this one is send B. So let's listen to what some reverb and delay sounds like on our little software instrument here. <laughs> We can hear if we add some reverb on those drums. We can add an extra effects track by right clicking and select insert return track. And then there we go. There's a third track there. And we can go up to our browser, look for audio effects, and we can select a new effect to drag in there. So if I wanted to have a chorus, I simply drag the chorus down to that return track. And then I can add some chorus by now you see a third little box has appeared here and I can add some effects here. Now you'll notice that my master track there is going red, which means that my overall volume is too loud. So I'm going to turn everything down and let's now export the track by selecting this little slider here, popping it where I want the song to start and then popping the end where I want the song to finish. All I do is go file, export audio and video, and we can export our song as either a WAV file here, or we can click this on to get an MP3 version as well. When we hit export, that's going to export our song. We need to give it a name and choose where we want to save that song. Make sure you also name your Ableton Live session and save it by clicking file and save live set. And I'm going to save this to the desktop and call it test session. If you want to make sure that all of the audio files in your session are saved into the session folder, go file and select collect all and save. So there we go. I think we just went over the 10 minutes just a little bit, but I hope this is enough to get you started creating music in Ableton Live 10. If you found this content valuable, Make sure you subscribe to the channel for future content and I'll see you in the next video.